Good afternoon, good evening maybe, Every, good night <laughs> everyone. Uh, it's nice to have you here, thanks for joining our session. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, technical aspects of publication in several languages. Sharing and uh, basically the idea is to have a little bit uh, interactive session. So we have only a few slides. Uh, we will introduce the problem to make sure we are speaking about the same thing. And later, even though you wanted maybe to talk about different things, just join and uh, uh, Tom as moderator can uh, kindly let you to the screen as well. And uh, you can talk about uh, what kind of issues you experience because uh, we believe that uh, um, this is a problem of face not only, for instance, as we saw it in Russian language and English language publication, but also like uh, in any country which has a lot of uh, publications on uh, national language. If you cannot speak English, but assuming still can understand me, uh, you can also try talking to us in Russian, Belarusian, uh, maybe you can understand some Ukrainian and Polish, I guess, Italian, German, so like don't be shy if you, your English is not so good, we will help you. And my name is uh, Alex Birukov. Uh, I work in uh, Springer Nature and um, like uh, I uh, um, am responsible for a program of journals which are translated from different languages so that's why I also have in uh, interest in this topic and uh, uh, co-presenting with me uh, Alexei. Yeah, thank you Alexander. My name is Alexei Skalaban. I'm from Russian Consortium. It is called National Electronic Information Consortium. Uh, or Nikon, so, but I, I live in Belarus, Greece. so we are very welcome to see everybody here and we hope that uh, our presentation will be and our talk will be uh, useful for both sides. Thank you very much, Alexander. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so let me start uh, from introducing the program uh, problem. So, you know, like uh, this is a journal Physica, which has been published uh, in the uh, Soviet Union that time uh, in 20th century for quite a long time. And uh, this journal was um, known for those people, of course, who know Russian and so on, or maybe even abroad. But it only became a little bit more known uh, to the international community once uh, a US Army veteran uh, after the Second World War uh, decided to translate those journals in English and publish them as consultants bureau journals. That was the name of the company. Uh, in English in the, in the US and uh, consultants bureau then became Plenum, Plenum became Kluver, Kluver was merged with Springer, Springer became Springer Nature so that's how like I got this specific journal in my program now uh, but to the world this uh, journal is known as Russian physics journal so you will not find physics in Web of Science or Scopus or uh, Dimensions but you will find Russian physics journals which published in English and of course uh, you know like you can already here start thinking okay do we translate everything from here or not and uh, what about i don't know like uh, physics is a hard science right but if you think about um, more humanities and political science maybe there will be different criteria what you publish in soviet union at that time and what is interesting to the researchers in the international community right so so here are these aspects uh, and uh, uh, there are also examples now of new generation of journals, so which are not translated uh, by different publishers because uh, Physica is published uh, by a university publisher in uh, Russia and this is published by international publishers in Indonesia. But there are journals now who are natively supporting several languages and I put here example from Echo Vector which to me is uh, like uh, the most extreme I could find because they have Russian, English and Chinese. Uh, so, you know, like it's the same article, uh, they have the same DOI, so they don't have the problem like we have here, because here you cannot have the same DOI. Uh, but uh, publishing in multiple languages also introduces uh, different problems. First of all, ethical problems. What about duplicate publication, right? So you should not publish things twice, as Cobb says. But what about publishing twice in different languages? Uh, so my personal take, and that's more or less like what I uh, see also supported by research integrity community is uh, you can do whatever you want as long as you're transparent and it makes sense here. So like, for instance, you could publish uh, as we do a translated paper, be transparent about the fact that it's translated paper 
and uh, then there are no problems. But there are sometimes problems. For instance, there was article retracted because it was published in Chinese earlier. And even though the very same uh, people um, translated it and published, uh, the editor-in-chief told, sorry, uh, I want to publish on the original resource. You published this previously, so I don't want it. Uh, and uh, for instance, uh, last year, uh, Russian Academy of Science um, did uh, investigation, a large-scale investigation, and they found that a lot of papers were uh, plagiarized uh, across languages. And it was not only, you know, like that people published their paper somewhere else uh, in English without telling that it was published in Russian. Because in many cases, those were like small journals, uh, not so uh, visible internationally. So it might have made sense and maybe you can go with correction. No, there were also people taking somebody else's paper, changing the authors and publishing it in English. So uh, the, like ethical aspects should not be discounted in publishing uh, in several languages. And then there are not only ethical aspects, there are also aspects of research evaluation. So uh, this example, which you saw in the uh, description of our session, uh, there are two articles, one in Russian, the other one is its translation in English. Guess which is cited more? Uh, yeah, uh, like normally uh, English version is cited more, but that's not always the case. But in terms of research evaluation, uh, maybe it would be uh, better to be uh, uh, to make it possible to uh, have uh, both citations and say that like altogether it has uh, in this case uh, 1102 citations and uh, such uh, tools already exist uh, so for instance math uh, net ru links uh, to dimensions uh, uh, russian version and uh, english version and uh, here you can uh, imagine you know like combining those metrics uh, and uh, we also know, so that's uh, like uh, entirely Alexei's <laughs> contribution uh, as a technical aspect, that uh, Crossref provides a uh, possibility to link translation. So you can say that uh, DOI of the English version is translation of the Russian version. And of course, like you can have here DOI Chinese is translation of Russian of, in that example, which I was showing previously. And uh, you can also uh, link it back and say that the DOI of the Russian version has translation and link here English version. Uh, and at this point, I would uh, pass on to Alexei. So Alexei, could you maybe share your screen? And we would like to learn more about you and then uh, structure the session uh, by either bringing you to screen, replying to your comments, or if you are, happen to be inactive, then we can continue by showing you examples. But that would be the most boring continuation, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Th thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, you see the QR code. Uh, you may use uh, your phone. Or you see the link uh, for poll in chat. And uh, I will share my screen and you will see the results. Okay, I think you, 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 you can see the results. Yeah. So uh, let's wait for 30 seconds. There will be only two slides, so it, uh, it's simple and quickly. So we see that our colleagues are publishers, librarians, researchers. Well, but mo mostly people are other. Okay, it's very interesting. Oh, we have a, a rather uniform split apart from other. So we, we guessed the audience incorrectly. People who are other, maybe like you can uh, put here. Yeah, of course, like all of us do many things, but you know, like <laughs> choose something. <laughs> Okay, and this is another question. 
So it's... Alexei, could you go back just for a second? Yeah. I want to make a screenshot for our... Yeah. 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 Thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So some people have uh, this experience and I think that it will be very useful and helpful for everybody if they will sh try to share their experience in chat or by video. Okay, Alexander, so uh, now uh, I back to you, so uh, you can... Uh, right, talk. so mm -hmm. thank you very much, Alexei, and thank you very, mu uh, very much, everyone, for participating. So those people who have experience, uh, do, do you feel like you can uh, maybe share some problems which we didn't bring to surface, uh, maybe some more important problems? So, so, so maybe Hideaki, maybe you, you can tell about your publishing in English and Japanese experience, or Daisy, you. So I'm happy to invite people on stage if they'd like to come up and um, join in the conversation. Uh, if not, I can talk, I can ask a couple of questions. Um, although this is not my area of expertise, we deal with researchers every day at ORCID um, and I'm sure uh, we could do a better job and I'd like to know how um, would be my question. So Daisy or Daki, would either of you like to pop on stage and, and um, join in a conversation? If not, we can see some questions appearing. So there's a question here that says, sometimes an author specifically cites an English version, sometimes a non-English version, and sometimes both. Do you think it's really accurate to merge these citations? Uh, yeah, you, you know, like I, I'm not saying uh, we should always merge the citation. I'm saying that we should have this possibility. It's like, you know, in some cases, if you think about research objects like with connected data, preprint, and so on, in some cases, it makes sense to say, like, overall, this research cluster has so many citations, and then, like, Russian and English version also count. Sometimes it may say, no, sorry, we only count this thing. So, for instance, you know, like if somebody wants to report on their Russian language publications, uh, then probably it doesn't make sense to uh, count translated. Hi, Daisy. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Should I just jump in? Sorry, you guys were already talking. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I was going to say I work as a library and publications manager for an international environmental organization. So we um, are a publisher ourselves of re reports mostly, so not journals so much. Um, and one problem I've seen is that sometimes our authors or our colleagues will translate a report, but sometimes it might be years after the original. And so they also take it as an opportunity to update the content. So it's kind of a translation, but not of the exact original. It's also in a way a, a new edition. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one challenge. And just a quick, you know, like idea, maybe uh, we, we have it some, sometimes in research when uh, people publish something like living reviews. There is review as of 2012. Sometimes it is a review of 2020, right? So then you can say, oh, it was actually published in another language, but here we updated this and this and translated it. Mm -hmm. just, just as a kind of quick idea. Yeah. Oh. Hidaki, 
Can you yeah. maybe? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the in in the Japanese society, so uh, we have some so journals and also some uh, like reports. So that uh, especially report is very important in the engineering domain. So that so uh, we regularly so publish so uh, uh, such a report in Japanese. But so it is also we often uh, put in the so English titled English abstract also. So in addition to Japanese title and Japanese abstract, because it is uh, easy to like uh, for like uh, that uh, for convenience. But so now so uh, like uh, so some uh, because the publishers are crawling so they take and such a uh, such a pay report. So then so oh it is already published. So then so English version is uh, denied. So because but the content is different. That's a, that's a problem done. So uh, now so such a society so refrain uh, so putting so uh, English and uh, English uh, English abstract and English titles <laughs> is a very confusing. So it, because the uh, content is served in Japanese, but so only they are judging so title and abstract. That's uh, when so trouble some. So uh, and also we have trouble in in the Japanese society. So uh, like uh, especially uh, the publication of uh, uh, papers or so that uh, yeah because of some um, originality as some uh, scope over paper is different like so some overlap maybe so that that's because uh, some so target target of audience is different for the paper but so that's very also some so because uh, okay if some someone so uh, on, on the english paper first then so also uh, and and uh, but so it takes time so it, because japanese engineer is not so well for writing in english so the first report is often appeared in japanese but it's very careful like yeah because, uh, because then, so uh, English paper will be rejected in the, in the future. That is a very troublesome. So it's a Japanese native, so uh, uh, researcher and engineers. I see. It, it seems like a, a lot of the problems you described they would not be also language specific, but because we are trying to combine several languages, it introduces complexity, right? Yeah, that's uh, still so. Uh, yeah, because of so especially not so. Researcher uh, like as a researcher in, in, in university, is uh, they okay speak in English and write English, but so engineer so like so in, in the industry, so they are working in in Japanese in in most of life. So so uh, that is not so easy to to write so English paper as uh, Japanese papers at, at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I also, uh, you know, like uh, since Tom was asking about Orchid, uh, I, I wanted to share the, um, uh, you know, like uh, uh, s s some ideas about Orchid. So th here, here you can see my Orchid, and maybe you can comment, uh, Daisy and uh, um, Alexei and uh, Hidaki, if you um, have some similar experience. So, so in, in in this case, you know, like first of all, it starts with my name, which you can yeah. spell like in. Uh, for instance, I, I normally use Alex, not uh, Ali Alexander, uh, because it's easier for people, right? But then I also have all the spelling uh, using Russian transcription, uh, and then you have different alphabets here. Uh, but despite this, even though like I was publishing under this, this paper with Alexei, uh, it, it ended up in ORCID. So uh, this is something ORCID already does well, but I would say a lot of infrastructure providers would count those people as like uh, five, four or five different people. <laughs> that, that, that's... Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's the same situation. So uh, in my case, so uh, that, that, that's so um, actually, so uh, I have uh, some publication in, in English and in Japanese also something like uh, uh, any good example for, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you can. Uh, uh, okay, this, this is uh, this is my orchid, so uh, you can click it. So, uh, so that's so, uh, yeah, it's now so in the orchid, so uh, uh, it's a, actually so a publication the mixed. So, uh, you can uh, I, I study so right, I okay, it's Japanese name, so so yeah, I starting to use uh, orchid for English, uh, English uh, uh, publication. But later on, so like a uh, uh, data site, so ah, okay. now so 
put okay oh yes <laughs> so so uh, data site so auto update is now so uh, automatically so put so my japanese so uh, uh, work <laughs> Is a, oh, yeah, it's a, yeah. And it's a very it, actually, you know, like when I was browsing yours, uh, I realized that here we actually have only preprint to our paper, but we don't have our paper. So, you know, like some infrastructure providers are better than uh, others. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Daisy. Oh, I was going to say, um, like as you've done in ORCID with your name, in our publications database for our reports, um, often what we'll do, yeah, we might have a report published in Russian or Korean, and we try to provide both the original title that is in the original uh, script, um, but also to we have another field where we can enter the, the translated title um, because it is often a translation of an English title. So we might say protected areas, Korean version, um, and so we try to do it like that, but I don't know off the top of my head, probably, probably someone in the group has a better understanding if there's also, um, like if Crossref has that kind of, uh, has that in their metadata schema to do sort of like also known as. Yeah, yeah, I think, I guess Crossref is, I think so Crossref have an alternative title as a problem sum in a data site. Data site have no, uh, in, <clears throat> no language tag, so in, in metadata. So that means so some data is a title. So it has to choose a, in a English title or a Japanese title. You can use both. Mm -hmm. So that that's also troublesome. So uh, yeah, that's so yeah. all. That is a data one only one data or one paper. But so uh, in Crossref, so I think so uh, they can put some alternative uh, title as a, in a different so uh, language. But, yeah, uh, you, they, you know, like all yeah. these examples you were mentioning and Daisy were mentioning, basically what you need is kind of to have several languages for the title. And maybe you just use English, or maybe you use like seven, and maybe you use seven for title and three for abstract, right? Because you didn't have time to translate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so, really nice. Yeah, but so the data site is a not. So the data site allows only so one title, no, no, English, uh, no language tag. Mm. That's so also troublesome. So yeah, mm -hmm. so that's metadata be different in the by RA. <laughs> and uh, you know, like uh, uh, there were people also asking us about machine translation. So uh, let me quickly comment, and then maybe you can provide your perspective. So. In my perspective, machine translation is um, good enough in a sense you can get what the paper is about, but it's not so nice to read completely and maybe sometimes it will uh, trick the details, especially now when uh, we use all these deep learning uh, methods and so on. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like my friend works on um, uh, machine translation from weird uh, and uh, rare languages like uh, Belarusian to Cornish and so on. And, and then he would say, you know, like if the model is uh, not really nicely trained, because like English German, you will have like dozens of uh, millions of examples, right? But th then the model tricks you. It's, it, it pretends to translate in it. But actually, it uh, it's completely unread, uh, uh, makes no sense what what it provides. So I don't know, like, what's your experience about using mm -hmm. machine translation for uh, scientific literature? Yeah, I agree. Like, it's good good enough, right, to get the gist of what something is about. But especially for for us, in a way, we try to kind of my organization, IUCN, tries to define terms and establish standards in environmental conservation. So, for example, we might say. National park means that this and this and this are done. And that's different from a nature reserve that does this and this and this. And so sometimes, yes, you can translate it through Google Translate or whatever, but sometimes we have a very keen interest in maintaining an exact, the exact translation or the exact word that's used in different languages to refer to those specific terms. Um, and that might not carry over as well with um, the automatic translations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, probably I'm uh, long so information. So some will say so data site also arrows all the on the on the dated titles. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I will check later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So. And uh, th thanks for your contributions. And um, uh, so regarding if works in other languages than English are invisible, is the problem the dominance of English? Uh, partially, yes. Uh, or to the exclusion of other languages, or that a variety of languages exists. The invisibility argument often seems to relate to the former. Uh, yeah, you know, like on the one hand, we uh, all think that international science use English, and that's probably, uh, yeah, it's it's correct. But on the other hand, especially I have anecdotal, anecdotal evidence that uh, a lot of publications in humanities, for instance, would be in more in na national languages. And also, you know, like when we, sometimes say that science is done in English. It's not true. Science is done in local languages. It's then written in English often. Mm -hmm. we, we just see the tip of the iceberg written in English. And uh, by the way, like uh, Daisy Hidaki, I want to ask you, uh, uh, when Caroline Grant was asking here about, um, uh, so the only question which we have here, sometimes an author specifically cites an English version, sometimes non-English version, and sometimes both. Uh, um, so, so regarding citing different versions, I want to pick on this particular one. So in Russia, there is this uh, tradition from last century. You can cite uh, the Cyrillic version, so the Russian version. Then you can, if you cite it in international publication, you can cite uh, transliterated. So basically you type Latin alphabet, yeah. Russian letters, yeah. or if, there is translation. Often there is not. You can cite um, you can cite the English version. So do you have something similar, like transliteration? Because I really liked uh, earlier there was Chinese presentation, and basically their conclusion was they convinced Scopus to get any references, even in Chinese, as long as there are DOIs, which in my opinion is brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, in our publications database for our reports, I've seen both like um, the transliterations in the case of Russian titles or um, Korean titles um, and also just in the original native script because I think I, I'm originally a librarian in training so it's also about access right sometimes the person if a Korean uh, language speaker is searching for on a topic they're most likely going to use Korean script um, yeah. Korean characters, not the transliterated ones. So it, it's important also for that reason. And also for attributing citations uh, at certain point, because uh, like a lot of research evaluation now citation driven. <laughs> so if you lose citation, it's not nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, Carolyn, maybe like one more comment on this uh, for me. It, it, uh, to, to me, there is a nice parallel, you know, like yesterday, um, uh, Roberto Di Cosmo was telling about these intrinsic identifiers. So, 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 so it was mind boggling, basically, like if you open software code in Linux, you probably get different uh, end of uh, line characters. So when you create an identifier, it's a little bit different because it's technically not completely the same code. So, so, so to me, it would be also nice, you know, like to have at certain point, okay, I want to cite namely this version or maybe that version or maybe even this paragraph in this version. And, and maybe like, you know, at certain point you can uh, uh, even embed it like uh, Wikipedia sometimes does. So let's see. So I guess we are, uh, we need to round up. Uh, so thank you very much for your contributions. Uh, it was really nice to have you on the screen and um, uh, talk to you. And thank you for all the nice questions. Uh, meanwhile, we also uh, solved some of the problems I guess, <laughs> and enriched our understanding of this uh, session. So thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay.